Production of Swansong is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Sixty-four episodes into the series, and I can say that most of my favorite episodes are when I take a game that most people wouldn't even pay attention to and surface some historical significance that isn't known outside of Japan. This episode is definitely going to be one of those. Today's game is Sotsugyo Graduation for Wonderswan, a port of the highly influential 1992 racing simulation game of the same name, originally released on the NEC PC9800 series of home computers. This port was developed by Imageworks, published by Bandai Visual under its Emotion sublabel, and released on December 16th, 1999. Imageworks, known as Nihon Imageworks prior to April of 1995, started life in 1991 as a production and licensing company that would provide assistance on various game projects. In March of 1992, they merged with the PC game studio Headroom, which was actively working on the PC-98 release of Sotsugyo to be released in June of that year. Imageworks would go on to work on all Sotsugyo releases and ports to some degree between 1992 and 1996, though it's not always clear when they were actively developing the game themselves and when they were assisting Tenki, which was the other studio known to have developed the PC Engine ports of the series. Despite that, the direct involvement with the series since the very start sounds very promising for this port turning out well. Raising Simulation is a genre that's focused on raising one or more characters, whether they be humans, animals, or fictional creatures, by taking actions from a menu-driven interface that will impact their character attributes. Those character attributes then inform which events and cutscenes will occur throughout the game's story, and often end up determining which ending the player encounters at the end of the game. This genre differs from JRPGs in that the goal of raising these attributes is not to benefit from them in combat against enemies, but rather to influence the direction the narrative takes. Prior to Sotsugyo's release, the game that really established the genre's convention was Gainax's 1991 release, Princess Maker, for the PC-98. That game had you raise an adoptive daughter to adulthood, and your actions would ultimately determine her occupation. Importantly, in this game, your adoptive daughter was a blank slate with little personality of her own. It was up to you, through your actions and imagination, to flesh out who that character was. Sotsugyo's big spin on the Princess Maker formula was to increase the amount of characters you're responsible for throughout the game, and make them more fleshed out characters with predefined personalities. The way they achieve that is pretty simple. You, the main character, are a teacher at an all-girls high school in Yokohama, and are directly responsible for helping five students graduate during their last year of high school. Sotsugyo was being developed as a mixed-media project from the very start, and defining who these girls were was important to get them feeling consistent across the game, drama CDs, light novels, animated OVAs, manga, and more. Your goal in this game isn't to shape these young women into what you want them to be, it's to get them all to graduate high school, enter prestigious colleges, and be the best version of themselves that they can be. Sotsugyo stands out to me as being a particularly important influence on Konami's 1994 dating simulation game Tokimeki Memorial. Surprising absolutely no one, games in which you got to date women from a larger cast of characters were not new in 1994, but prior games mostly did so through a system of branching story paths. Those games were known as romance adventure games. Elf's PC-98 game Dokusei, which was released six months after Sotsugyo, was a hugely successful implementation of that romance adventure genre in a high school setting. Funnily enough, both games' character design were done by the same artist, Take Masaki. While this is definitely an oversimplification, Tokimeki Memorial blends Dokusei's narrative with Sotsugyo's mechanics, leading to much more engaging gameplay and applying a similar mixed-media strategy, establishing the standard for what AAA dating sim franchises would look like going forward. So while from the outside Sotsugyo might look like it is a dating sim, especially if you can't read Japanese, this definitely isn't a dating sim, but it remains very important to the history of that genre regardless. Throughout researching this game, I came across a backup of the main programmer Takeuchi Nobukazu's website, last updated in the year 2000. His website has a full list of games he worked on and short comments about his time working on all of them. Through his website, I discovered that he was also the sole programmer on the original PC-98 release of Sotsugyo. I've translated his comments on Sotsugyo for Wonderswan here. It's a faithful port of Sotsugyo's original PC-98 release, aside from the Drama Festival minigame which had to be cut. It makes use of the Wonderswan's audio playback functionality by playing voice lines whenever a status change occurs. For the first time in a while, I was put in charge of programming. Portable games are relatively feasible as a single person, so I pretty much managed to deliver what I had in mind. 
Since the Wonderswan has seven shades of gray as opposed to the usual four, and it can play compressed voice clips in real time, this port turned out to be quite technologically ambitious. By all indications, he was the only person actively involved with producing this Wonderswan port. The only other person listed in his staff listing is character designer Take Masaki, which was commissioned to produce new cover art for the game. This was also his first ever handheld game. The game's flow is pretty straightforward. Every half week, your student's plan, schedule, and stats will be displayed on screen. As the teacher, you can choose to intervene and customize one student's schedule to help steer her stat growths over those days into particular attributes. If any attributes are dangerously low, they will be flashing to get you to prioritize them. If the plan schedule already addresses stats that are in need of attention, it may be wise for you to prioritize another student whose lowest stats aren't actively being dealt with by their plan schedules. On Sundays, you get a day off, which you can spend either working on your own character attributes, give students presents to raise their popularity stats, or tutor students who are too far behind in a given subject. Okay, so now that I think about it, that doesn't really sound like a day off at all. Your students can also gain status effects of sorts that limit what you can and can't do with them for a given period of time. Students can run away from home, get sick, experience heartbreak, become rebellious, or even delinquents. You can deal with some of them by talking through their worries on Sundays, but some of them just require your patience. During summer and winter vacations, you will be asked to accompany a student every day, and your choices here will unlock illustrations of that student engaging in various leisure activities. These illustrations are amongst my favorite art in the entire game. You also engage in a short conversation where the reply you choose can raise or lower certain stats for that student. These conversations are somewhat flirty in nature, which is going to be uncomfortable for many, but that is the most problematic this game gets with regards to inappropriate teacher-student conduct, or at least as far as my playthrough was concerned. Aside from that, there are two other types of events throughout the school year. There are sports festivals, which put your students' physical stats to the test as they run a relay race against other classmates. This minigame would definitely be referenced in Tokimaki Memorial as well, because that is one of the flagship activities of the game. There are also term finals, which are a short cutscene of your students answering trivia questions. These impact how highly your students rank amongst their peers. There are seven endings per student based on how their stats are allocated at the end of the game and how high they are in the student rankings. My first full playthrough of the game took about an hour and ten minutes to complete. I got a regular teacher rating, and only one of my students had what I consider to be a bad ending, which is much better than I typically fare in these kinds of games on the first try. As is usually the case with this genre, the character illustrations are fantastic, but there are so few of them, and the bulk of your time will be spent looking at the same character portraits over and over. The game's album mode lets us see how many illustrations there are in total. There are 25 character portraits, 5 per character, most of which are for status effects. There are 35 endings, 35 events, and 9 bonus illustrations for clearing the game under specific conditions. That's 104 illustrations, but I only unlocked 27 during my first playthrough, and a lot of those are just art you're going to be seeing every single playthrough. Your return on subsequent playthroughs is going to be a lot lower than that. And I guess that's kind of what my issue with this game is. Raising Sims, especially those involving human characters and not games like Derby Stallion, are a genre that is defined by the desire to lock character illustrations. If I'm going to do the work to unlock these character illustrations, why would I do it on a strictly worse version of the game? I mean, yes, the port is really well done, it's practically feature complete, illustrations look great despite running at almost a third of the resolution and in grayscale. Most Wonderswan games aren't as well put together or polished as this, and they t usually had teams of multiple people working on them. But at the end of the day, why would I not want to experience the original illustrations in their full 16 color 640x400 glory instead? I'm grateful to the Wonderswan version for letting me experience a game that I wouldn't necessarily have tried otherwise, and helping me trace the role that it played in the birth of the dating sim genre. But if I think I'm going to put any more time into the Sotsugo series, I think I'm too much of a sucker for the PC-98 aesthetic to continue doing it on the Wonderswan version. 